welcome to gd presence tech view another, another episode uh today I'll, I'll show you guys um how to create a jump machine and the first thing is i will discuss why actually you need jump machine and then how you're going to implement the jump machine and not only that inside the jump machine how you can as administrator how you can access your dns server how you can access your active directory from your jump machine. So I'll show you how you wanna install all those features like Active Directory features and also DNS features on your jump machine. So whatever you're gonna do in your system admin life, everything you're gonna do from your jump machine, you're gonna use that jump machine as your workstation. And that's what we're gonna see. Let's get started. All right. So first we are uh, gonna discuss about, so we, we want to learn, we want to learn what, why you need, why you need jump machine. First, we have to have a good understanding why we need jump machine. So for example, you are working for a company and company provide you a laptop. So this is your laptop or maybe your desktop or you can say workstation, right? So your laptop, desktop, or workstation gonna be connected through your office Wi-Fi, or if you work from remotely from home, then maybe it's gonna be connected with your home Wi-Fi. So anyway, your desktop, your laptop, which one is considered as a workstation in your op official purpose, so that workstation will be connected through Wi-Fi. So if you work as a system admin, this is my recommendation. I believe if you can work through Jump Machine, your all work will be safe. Plus, it's a kind of BDI solution. It's a kind of BDI solution, but actually your office doesn't have a BDI. As a system admin, at least after you join, you can request your team to have to have your uh, own Jump Machine. It's, a, it's gonna be a virtual machine inside your ESX environment. So one ESX, one virtual machine also, it, it can, you can have your own virtual jump machine or for your team, you can have two, uh, one or two jump machine which can be shared with your other coworker. So one machine at a time, two person can work, right? So if you have a two, four person or six person team, in that case, in that case you can build like six, sorry, three jump machine, then six person can share. It, it, so it depends. So I'll show you why you need it, how you're gonna install it, how you're gonna utilize it, and then not only that, so in your whole like entire system admin jobs, you can manage through jump machine, which will be 100% safe. Why is safe? I'm explaining right now. So for example, you are doing something on your office laptop and you just away for five or 10 minutes, you forget to lock your screen. So which is, and you are doing something important inside a server or application and that application is open here. Maybe you are accessing through the remotely from your workstation. That, that means through the VPN, maybe you are doing RDP session with workstation or maybe you are, you are accessing some application. So everything gonna be come from you company's data center. So for example, this is, if this is your company's server, say for example, your company has some server here. So ESX host, so ESX host means there is some multiple virtual machines and all those virtual machines may be a server, like virtual server for production uh, or maybe it can like virtual server for some uh, production applications, right? So you can have multiple, say 200 virtual server or 300 virtual servers. So day to day for your activities, you need to log in there, right? So if you log into any one of the machine from your laptop, like say for example, from your laptop, from your laptop, you logged in, that means the machine gonna become like this here. Oh, it's gonna open here. So whatever you're gonna do, it's gonna be saved here, right? It's gonna be saved here, right? So for example, you are accessing this VM, right? So you're doing, R this is a Windows machine. So you're doing RDP from here. So, and you are working, this is a production server or application server, right? for some reason you forget to do something here. Like you just 
or, or you just open your screen and you went for like you you went out for like 10 minutes or five minutes away from your laptop or desktop and then if somebody else come to your room or maybe something can be happen anytime right so that's that's a risk that's a risk so what are you gonna do what are you gonna do and also not only that like say for example you are working think about this is the application server or database server or something it's a it's a production server it's running with some database or application right so you are trying to install something here you are trying to install something here or you're trying to install something here so what from your laptop from your laptop say for example you open an application say you're applying sql server database update here right so think about this is the database update. I'm just, just giving an idea. I think about this is something something like this, right? Well, it's not, it's not the right one. Okay. Actually, say for example, something like this. So you are trying to install here. So you open, uh, you open, you download the software here and you're trying to install this piece of, this, uh, piece of software in this machine, right? So what are you gonna do? You somehow to the IP address you are making a relationship here, right? So, and think about this installation will take um, say 30 minutes or one hour or maybe two hours, total installation process of time. So you are in the middle of an installation, like 50% done. In the meantime, for some reason, if you, if you disconnected from the Wi-Fi, what's gonna be happen? Your installation process will be interrupted, right? So that, that's the one, one case, right? And maybe, or maybe uh, when you are 50% or 60% done, in the meantime, you have a phone call from uh, emergency phone call from your family or somebody else. So you're gonna shut down your laptop. So if you shut it down, what's gonna be happen with this installation? It's gonna be terminated, right? The installation process will be terminated and you're spending like almost more than one and a half hour just for installing this and you are almost 60% done, 40% left, then what's gonna be happen? It's gonna be terminated and you have to start again, so which is painful. So if you have a virtual machine, say for example, you have a one jump machine, think about this is a jump machine. So you open your jump machine from your laptop or workstation to the RDP, so that one will be you now, your screen, right? The BM will be your screen, right? The BM will be your screen, right? So now, if you want to install something here, it's not mean you are installing something in your laptop. So you're gonna download that one, and download it from your laptop and then copy to you, this jump machine, this virtual server, and then install here to here, from this jump machine to this virtual machine server or application server. So then the relationship will be Seems like it's working through like this and this, this, this. That's true. That's working like this, but actually not. Actually not. What? In your laptop, maybe you are getting through Wi-Fi, maybe 90 megabyte. But when the BM, when the BM is here, when the BM is here, BM open here, right? BM open here, but actually the BM is, the actual BM is here. You just open the RDP session, right? You just open the RDP session. So this BM, this is a jump machine. Think about this is a jump, jump BM. What BM? Jump. This is a jump BM. So this jump BM, you just open here, right? And you are trying to install the software where? In this machine, this is a database machine, right? So seems like you relationship with through like this, right? Actually not, you just, providing some command to your laptop, but after you command, your command is done, that means actually you're hitting here. So the actually the relationship going from, actually the software, the piece of software is installing here and here. You are watching from your laptop, but actually the operation is happening like this here. So it's happening everything internally, internally on this host. So there will be the same kind of the speed you are getting from the network switch. You're going to have the same kind of 
So if you have a 10 gig connections here, all the BMs will have the 10 gig connection. So nothing gonna be happen. So you can install the software. You are, it's just your view from your workstation, right? The piece of software you're installing from the jam machine and why are you installing your, so this one right in here, right? This is application machine. But that all the transaction is happening through from this one to this one, this one to this one, this one to this one, right? So if you if you shut it down your laptop, it doesn't matter after you click the installation, and then when the installation person is going, it's going through like this. If you have disconnected from the network, it doesn't matter. Maybe this window will be disconnected, maybe if you disconnect from the network, or if you shut it down, it's gonna be disconnected, like it's gonna be going away. But any the command you already provided, that's going to be run. It's going to be run here. So you're 100% safe, right? Also faster. So that's why you need jump machine. The jump machine is nothing. It's a demo type of your workstation. But workstation is a physical, this is a virtual. Plus, you are getting higher speed of internet, like security. If you close it out, it's going to be on your data center, on your ESXA host. It's not going to be anymore on your physical machine. So your physical machine can be bad anytime, right? Something can be happen anytime on your physical workstation. So that's why I highly recommend if you work as a system admin, you should have a jump machine for your day-to-day -day activities. Now let's get started to build a jump machine. So we understand, I believe you guys understand why you need the jump machine. So jump machine is nothing. It's a simple virtual machine. Simple virtual machine means what? In the ESXi, you guys already know how to create a virtual machine. First, you have to create a virtual machine. Then on top of that virtual machine, you have to install Windows operating system. And then when you have in Windows operating system, you know how to install the Windows operating system. Any, any, any operating system like 2016, 2019, or 2022, right? So after that, what are you going to do? So I'm going to show you here. So for example, I'm going to log in there. So right now I have three machines. Just I'm going to log in again. All right. So I have a three virtual machine here running. Um, SLV ADDC, which is domain controller, Active Directory domain controller. SLV DNS 01, DNS server, and one jump machine. So jump machine is nothing, it's just a virtual machine. I just name it as a jump machine because I'm using as a jump machine, that's why I name it jump machine, but it's up, it's up to you what's you're gonna be named for your machine. So it's up to you 100%. But I put it here, jump machine, because to make it, to make it more sense, like, uh, related to whatever you, for, for, for what reason you are building this, right? You are building to use it as a jump, right? Jump start, jump machine, right? That's why I just name it jump machine. But if you want to have, if you want any other name, no issues. All right, so these three machine, I, I, what, I, what I did so far, I just created a virtual machine and then for jump machine, I just created a virtual machine and then I installed Windows operating system here and then after you install the operating system, what do you need to do? So, and after that, I enable what I'm, I'm going to explain here. You see, I just logged into RDP. So this is the RDP session on this server, you see. 10.15.0.7, this is my uh, jump machine. If you go to the local server, you're gonna see it. So after you install the virtual machine, you have to do first some fix, uh, some uh, common task. What is the common task is? You have to install, um, you have to change first. You have to install VMR tools. Second, you have to change the time zone. Well, I'm in the Eastern time, that's why I change it to Eastern time zone. And then uh, turn off the firewall. But later on, you can enable the firewall through the GPU policy. That's fine. But I don't have any GPU policy, so that's why I just turn it off. Uh, but through the GPU, it should be on. And, and remote desktop I have enabled. That's how I'm able to log, uh, log in through the RDP session. This is the RDP session. And this is my IP address. And, and also SLV jump 01. This is my machine name. So I change the machine name. I change the machine name here. So if you don't know how to do that, I have a complete video I'll share. I'll put it on my description box. 
how to create a virtual machine and how to install the Windows Server operating system. So I'll share that link to my uh, this video's description box. So if you don't know how to do that, you can watch it, watch that video. Okay, so and then what are you gonna do? You're gonna add that machine with the domain, which I'm already done, right? I'm already done, you see here? Uh, how are we gonna do that? See here, it was before on work, work, uh, work group. So I just added to it with the domain like this. So it's pretty simple how you're gonna add it. And then you have to authenticate through an authenticated user. And then it's gonna be added to the domain. So if I show you on the domain side, on the, uh, uh, here. So I'm going to minimize it. And I logged in, this is the my Active Directory server. You see here the IP address, let's make it big. I see two, IP number two is my Active Directory server, which is IP number two. And if you look at here, so this is the Active Directory machine. That's why I have I have here, you see computer object. If you go computer object, then uh, server, Texas, Dallas, right? Virginia, Windows 2016, 2019. So, so 2019, I have a development, I have a production. If you go to the development, you're gonna see this is my jump machine. So I added this jump machine with the <clears throat> domain and also for just for organize, um, the OU, I just put it this one on this development folder. All right, so so whenever you will, will be able to join with the domain, so this is my domain controller, right? And how I'm going to get this one, Active Directory users and computers from here, right? from, if you go to the tools, you're gonna to see it here. And also, I have a DNS server here, which I already do, I already did the RDP session. RDP session is open here. So this is my DNS server. So if you want to check the DNS, what do you have, what do you have to go to? Tools and then go to the DNS, then you're gonna see, you're gonna find this one. So this is my DNS server by the name, you will see IP number four, DNS, and, and this is the DNS. DNS manager, right? If you expand it, you're gonna see everything here, right? You're gonna see everything here, right? So as a system admin, if you want to see the computer object, you have to go to the Active Directory machine. And if you want to, if you want to check what? If you want to check um, a DNS entry, then you have to come to, you have to log into your DNS server. So in your organization, you'll not, you're not gonna have just only one one, right? You can have multiple domain controller, for Active Directory, you can have multiple DNS server. So if you need to check the DNS, you have to log into DNS server. If you want to check the Active Directory users, groups, or uh, computer objects, you have to go to the your Active, Active Directory domain controller. So you have to log in here and there, here and there, you have to jump, right? So without jumping, without doing this, and also log in every time, directly log into the Active Directory server or DNS server is not safe security wise. So what you can do? So through the jump machine, you can do everything. So I'll show you how you're gonna do that. So on your jump machine, so we already understand what's the benefit of jump machine, right? You can do any kind of stuff from the jump machine. So for any kind of stuff, it's like, for example, you want to use vCenter, you want to use any uh, ILO, you want, I, for example, ILO login. So this is my jump machine, you see here, seven, I did. I just did the RDP on it. So type the your 10.15.0.8, if you, sorry, yeah, I think I have some network issues here. Let me finish the network issues, it's not pinging. Okay, so the server IP address, okay. Properties, if you see here, the network is has a alert here. So go to here, yep. 10.15.0.174 and one. So 
so it's gonna be resolved. And also you can do one thing. So run some command. I'll be disconnected. If I want to resolve it, I'll, I'll be disconnected from here. So I can resolve it to another way. Anyway, this is not the subject, okay? Don't be confused with this. Let me CMD. Run the command and check. Okay, ping 10.15.0.2. It's pinging, right? And run NS lookup. NS lookup and with that I have 10.15.0.2. Okay, it's giving you this one. And through this, again NS lookup. This everything you're getting, right? Okay. And then ping 10.15.0.4, which is your DNS server. So I'm everything I'm checking from my jump machine, right? Okay. So internet is doesn't matter. In this machine, you have internet or in you don't you don't have internet, it's a different issue. But I need to have access on my active directory. I need to have access on my DNS server. That's very important. So is pinging that's good and ns lookup for this machine 10.15.0.7 let's see yes so dns is working fine it's easy it's a job machine everything's showing so everything pinging everything showing which is really good so what you can do why you need to have um okay so we can ping actually PING ping 10.15.0.10. Okay, it's pinging. It, okay, it is not pinging. Anyway, uh, 10, sorry, 15.8. Yes, this one is pinging. This is another, and 10. Is pinging everything is pinging. That's fine. Okay, so what you can do from your jump machine? Anything you can do. So I just jump in. Just think about from my desktop. I just did a VPN and through the VPN, I'm able to do the RDP on my jump machine. This is my jump machine 10.15.07, which I explain here, right? Which I explain here. You, I just jump into. I just access jump machine here, right? So now what you can do, anything you can do. So you can say 10.15.0.10 is XI. You can browse it from here, right? And any 10.15.15.8, you see this is this is ILO. So anything, any application in, in, in your organization, you can everything you can do from your, uh, your job machine, you see? Everything I'm getting from there. So if I want to now, if I want to install something through ILO or iDirect, I can do from here. This is my jump machine. The, the window I'm, I'm able to see here, the desktop I'm able to see here, it's not my laptop. It's my jump machine. Which one? This is this is the machine. It's, it's coming from here. So if I close, if I close this RDP session, RDP session, what's going to be happen? So it, it open here, but it's gonna come go back to here. Actually, everything happened here, right? So that's what you can do with the jump machine. Any any types of installation, configuration, everything, whatever you're gonna do in your day-to-day uh, -day activities, do it through the jump machine. That's the first thing. The second thing is second advantage. What you can do. So if you install Active Directory roles some activity administrative roles and DNS roles here, then you don't need to log in your active directory again and again, your DNS server again and again. You don't need to do everything you can get it from here. But right now I will show you how you're gonna do that. So if you go to the tools, 
you are not able to see anything here. No DNS, no activity, right? So we're gonna see very shorty those options here. So what do you, you can do? So this is your jump machine. You know already you added to the domain, right? Everything. This jump machine is connected with your domain. That's how you are able to log in with your credential, with your username or credential, right? So what extra things you need to do in your jump machine? In your jump machine, what you, you need to add some uh, features. So click add roles and feature option next 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 and uh, uh okay dns server row uh, the server tools add as a feature click next and then go down 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 Remote server administration administrative administration tools. Okay. So check mark on this one. Features administrative tools. See IIS, you can add this, not an issue. And also, okay. Actually, we'll go back here. This 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 is not this rules. You don't need the web server IIS right now, actually. Remove it. Go back. Okay, sorry. Next. In here, you see here. LDS DLS tools, Hyper V management tools. If you want Hyper V, you can add it here. So it's up to you what kind of tools you want. Remote access survey tools, Windows Server Update Access Tools, Active Directory Certificate Survey Tools, Active Directory Write Management Service. Everything is here. Printer and document service tools. So if you want all, you can just have all of them. Activity Registration Management Service, DSCP, DNS, whatever the service you want, you can just add them from here. File service, fax service, whatever you want. Print and document, remote access management tools. If you want, you can add it. So it's up to you what you want to access from here. Active Directory Administrative Center. So this is the feature you just need to install, but make sure one thing you are going to add a remote server administration tools and what inside of it. You want all other things, also you can install this one if you want. And especially DNS server tools and role administrator tools, this is mandatory you need to do. Sorry, uh, remote server administration tools. This one you need to have a check mark. Okay, click next, 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 and install. So it's gonna take a little bit time. It's almost done. Just maybe a couple of more minutes. You click tools now you're gonna see some uh, of these features is already there so we are just waiting to complete this installation all right so this is done it says installation succeed on SLB. okay just close it now what you can do so this is your jump machine see here 10.15.0.7 what i can do just click you see here activity users and computers so right now I'm sitting on my jump machine and I'm able to get this screen. The one, to get this one, I supposed to log into my Active Directory domain controller, but without logging to the Active Directory domain controller, I'm getting this one, right? And also I'm getting through my jump machine. So this is the advantage, right? You see here, everything I'm getting here, see? 
servers BA 2016, you see, just expand it a little bit. 2019 development, you see, my machine is here, right? And also I have a user, user uh, account, standard user, You see here? So everything I'm getting from my jump machine. So I can I can maybe pin up here. And also now I'm gonna browse uh, my DNS manager from here. You see the DNS? And then just only first time you have to specify your DNS server name, so which is S L V B W D N S zero one right, okay, all right done, and then just pin up. So we are getting Active Directory. This one supposed to we get it from our Active Directory domain controller, and for DNS we supposed to log into our DNS server, but without logging to DNS server, without logging to Active Directory, as a system admin. I'm getting both from my job machine. So I can do everything from here now. You see here? You see? You are getting this window, this DNS manager I open from my job machine, right? And if I minimize this one, if I go to my DNS server, you see here, this is my DNS four, IP number four. This is DNS, original DNS server. So. Uh, same thing, right? Same window. Same window I'm getting with my IP number seven. Minimize it and see. It's in here. So that's all. And I believe if you watch from the beginning to end right now, up to here, you'll be understand um, how to deploy a jump machine and also why you need the jump machine. And then when you have a jump machine, how you're gonna use Active Directory features and also the DNS features inside your jump machine. So everything together I explain in this video. And thank you for watching. And if you are new in my channel, please subscribe my channel and click the bell icon to get my next video notification. And also if you already subscribe, and if you think this video help you, please give a big thumbs up and also make some comments, which is encourage me to make more video for you guys. Uh, and also sh please share this video if you think it's help you and it, it will help your friends, family or your coworker. Thank you and thank you again. Thanks for watching.